Hi everyone, so here we are. I wasn't sure about this video because I am not a medical professional, I am not a doctor, but I have suffered with acid reflux for over 15 years and in the last year is when I found that I got the most relief. And so since it's been a year and you know, some days aren't perfect, but they're nowhere near where I used to be. And the only reason they're not perfect on certain days is because my diet isn't on point and I slip up and hey, we're all human. But if I am really good about what I'm eating and my plan, I have like zero issues, zero inflammation, zero burning, zero, um, zero, zero. I have zero anything and pains, you know, like a lot of people think that heartburn and reflux is like only here, but for me it went up into my throat, which really sucks because I'm a singer, I'm a musician. Um, it's, it's just, it's not a good thing when you have to worry about your throat when you have to use it for what you love to do. Um, and a lot, a lot of the pain for me also would happen down on my left side, like all the way down into my pelvis. I, I've gotten tests done. I, I went to the emergency room in 2013 and got an, my appendix taken out. I had like really weird phantom pains. I went to the ER again during 2013 and they basically didn't know what the hell it was and said it was IBS, of course. In 2015, I got an MRI done and they couldn't find anything. So it's been up to me to figure this out. And for me, it started in 2003 and I noticed that I started getting um, just burning in my throat and um, I was singing at the time and trying to start a singing career. I would get tired very, my voice would get tired very easily. My voice would get hoarse very easily and I went to go see a doctor and he found a polyp on my throat, on my vocal cord, not my throat, on my vocal cord. I didn't have the 10,000 plus uh, dollars to get rid of the polyp so I just kind of said I was going to deal with it and maybe hopefully um, heal it on my own. I was researching and I, um, I they gave me some Nexium. That was my first introduction to Nexium and I took the Nexium. I took it for a, a while and it didn't help with the polyp. It didn't go away. I started a raw vegan diet at the end of 2004. I kept hearing at the time about, you know, all these people healing all these ailments with raw vegan uh, foods. And before that, I was not a vegan at all. So I went for it. That started my journey of, you know, what diet can fix me. So I started with raw vegan and did that off and on for many, many, many years. And it was in 2008 that I became fully vegan. And uh, at that point, I was just going from cooked vegan to raw vegan. I would spend a couple months doing raw vegan, then I would go back to some cooked food and just do that whole thing. I was not getting better. I remember just like dying from the pains in my throat and the heartburn. And for me, I get this like very cooling. It feels like a cooling effect in my throat. I was battling through though. I was still singing. I was still trying to do stuff. And it was just really, it was really tough on me. And it was a constant everyday worry, a constant everyday wondering how to fix this. I was taking uh, licorice or what are they called? Uh, DGL. I was taking DGL tablet. I was trying different protocols to detoxify. I was trying anything and nothing seemed to work, but I was still going along with the whole raw vegan vegan thing because that's what I thought would detoxify me the best. And um, I was pretty dogmatic about it. Uh, I was pretty happy about the fact that I 
wasn't eating any animals and I had started yoga teacher training at the time as well so my compassion was at an all-time high but years later in hindsight that compassion was there but not in my direction so I love animals more than anybody I love animals but before I get into that let's fast forward to 2019 so the whole journey started in 2003 and fast forward to 2019 I was really really sick I was feeling the pains here and these pains like the lower abdominal stuff did not start until after my son was born in 2012 they had put me on an IV of antibiotics during labor and birth because I tested positive for group beta strep and honestly that's what I think caused the whole issue for me with my whole like stomach area and left side pain and just like abdominal area to be completely out of sorts and completely out of whack. I went to go see a doctor in, it was late 2018, going into 2019, did a bunch of tests, found that I was completely deficient in magnesium, in vitamin D, in iron like way low in iron, so I had to do six iron infusions, and that really helped me. The doctor suggested that I try and introduce a little meat into my diet, like maybe once a week, no red meat yet, just like maybe a turkey burger or something. So I did it, um, I did it. I had gone through so many freaking diets, and I was really scared, because once you get over like 15 years of dealing with acid reflux, it can be super damaging and super scary and a lot of bad things can come about because of it. I started taking different supplements for my deficiencies and I remember it being like, it was like Christmas of 2018 and having this horrible episode of acid reflux. By this time I had read a bunch of books and tried to do a bunch of protocols um, it was like the Pivot Protocol, Acid Watchers Diet, uh, SIBO Solution, uh, what else? Uh, I was learning about SIBO and learning about FODMAPs and, and everything you could think of because I'm like research queen. <laughs> That's what my family calls me. And then I don't know how it happened. I was about to schedule a endoscopy and I came across a way of eating called the Fast Track Diet. And it was a man by the name of Norm Robillard. He also wrote a book called Heartburn, Fast Track Digestion, LPR, Acid Reflux, and GERD Diet. And I started reading it. And I noticed that they had a Facebook group. And I started reading people's testimonials and people's experiences. Oh, there's also an app too that was really helpful because with the book you have a list of foods and they're categorized by fermentation points categorized by food groups and then they're fermenta fermentation points and if you're really struggling if you're really in pain the best thing to do is to try and keep your fermentation points for the whole day to be less than 10 or even less than that like as as close to zero as you can get and the foods that have the least fermentation points are animal products. Meat and eggs have zero. So basically that's like a carnivore diet if you're really struggling. Dairy has a little bit, some, some carbs. And fermentation potential basically means, and I'm not a doctor, so you'll just have to research this yourself as well or get the book. Um, but I'm just telling you it worked for me. So fermentation potential, when you have things like fruits and vegetables that when they're inside your gut. They can like off gas pretty much or they can cause some bloating because you don't digest things like you used to do and some of us might need enzymes or betaine I believe it's called to help produce some acid in our stomach and break down our foods. There's like different things you can do but these are all things that you should consult with a doctor about to see if that's something that would work for you or might work for you. I would suggest a functional doctor because they have you know, the whole Western philosophy down, plus they dabble in alternative and natural healings. Back to fermentation, if you eat things like fruits and vegetables, they will ferment in your system and then create some gas or bloating. 
And what that will do is it's going to push up on that lower sphincter that separates your esophagus from your stomach and it'll like blast it open and then all the acids like start jumping up into your esophagus and burn you. So for many in the fast track diet on Facebook and including myself, what I did to start was just eat meats and eggs and butter and salt because when you're reducing carbs so much it's kind of like the keto thing you need to replace sodium potassium and magnesium and so i have an electrolyte supplement called relight by redmond's real salt that i like to get and i just stick a scoop in my water whenever i drink my 20 ounces of water three times a day and so that helps replenish those minerals but i'm getting off topic a little bit What's important and what's helped me and also helped the author because he had acid reflux is to just go as low on fermentation points as you can. And then after a while, what you would do is start adding a couple things in. So it's like the ultimate elimination diet. You're eating meat, you're eating butter, and then you see what it feels like when you start incorporating a little bit of vegetable at uh, dinner or lunch or even some berries maybe in the morning. I was doing really well just eating my meats and sometimes like I told you I'm not perfect. I have an eight-year-old son. He orders you know like little like puffs and stuff and I'll have some before I eat my lunch or I've had sugar in the last year. I've had cheesecake and and I feel the ramifications of doing that but then I also know that I can just get back on my plan and start to help the inflammation to go down and the burning to go down and to keep healing. But like I said, I'm so much better than I was a year, two years, three years, four years, 15 years ago. So you can heal, it just takes some discipline. And I'm telling myself that too, I am not perfect. But what I need to do and what I would tell myself is, you eat meat, you eat your eggs, you eat your butter, and salt, Redmond's Real Salt is the one I like. You have your electrolytes. And then once you start feeling better on that, doing that for a couple of weeks, usually you'll start feeling better around, you know, third, fourth day even, but just to keep it going and keep the healing going in your whole system. Once you do it for like a couple of weeks, a month, see what happens when you introduce uh, some asparagus or a little broccoli or uh, I would do cooked more than raw to start. Also, I had a real big setback a couple of weeks ago when I was doing really well eating my meats and my eggs and butter and I decided that I was gonna have a smoothie with almond milk, banana, and frozen berries. The frozen berries were strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, and raspberries. And I had it, the first day I had it, it was okay. And then I had it the second day the third day and by then I was completely messed up again and was having my symptoms again. This is a huge topic and it's really hard. Like people asked me what my diet was on here. I presume because they thought that I looked younger than I am so they wanted to know any secrets. And so I really was torn about talking about this diet but I really do feel like it can definitely give a lot of people out there that are dealing with acid reflux relief and not have to take antacids and the purple pill or any sort of pills like that which destroy your system and your bones over time and can give you osteoporosis and just the inability to digest food on your own ever. So that's my personal opinion about those things. You need to figure out what your opinion is about those supplements and, and pills and medicine. But for me, I wanted to heal with food. And another thing that really helped me out was intermittent fasting. And I naturally am not hungry in the morning, so my last meal of the day is usually um, ends around 6 to 7. It's anywhere between 5.30 to 7. It's my last meal of the day when it ends. And then I won't eat the next day until about 12 or 12.30. And my meal is usually two eggs sunny side up with butter and salt and i'll either have some like turkey sausage with that or turkey bacon dinner will usually be some sort of meat 
I would have might have eggs again. I'm pretty full after lunch and it's kind of hard for me sometimes to eat even eat dinner because I'm not that hungry but I will eat like a sirloin steak that's maybe four ounces. I'm starting this new meal plan. I'll let you know how that goes where I get to pick a variety of meat because I haven't had a variety of meat. I'm not into organ meats and all that stuff. This service has meal plans that include what am I getting? I'm getting be getting some salmon, bison, elk, flat iron steak, just something to switch it up. And I will be doing a vegetable once in a while. I will probably won't be doing the fruits for a little bit, but I'm just gonna see how this works out for me and I'll definitely give you guys an update. This was a hard one to do because it's just been over 15 years of research, experience, failing at things, becoming really, really sick after doing vegan and raw vegan for 11 years. I depleted my body, I, de I was deteriorating and thankfully doing a carnivore type diet to help rebuild my cells, rebuild the proteins, just rebuild. And I do think it's working. The only thing that, um, I and I love intermittent fasting. The only thing that I would want more of is to be able to eat other foods and be okay, like I'm talking about healthy foods, you know, greens, and to stop and to stop eating sugar, chocolate. I'm kind of a sugar addict, and that's what probably got me in this mess in the first place. From being a sugar addict from when I was a little girl to, you know, in my early 20s, I was drinking alcohol on Fridays and Saturdays and then having late night burritos and then going to sleep. That's like the perfect storm for acid reflux issues and completely destroying your digestive system. So if you are young, don't drink, don't eat crap, don't eat a lot of sugar, easier said than done, but you can heal and I will definitely give you guys an update, ongoing update, but this is the best I have felt in many, many, many years. So I highly, highly recommend looking into the fast track diet. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Now you know what I eat and what I do and hopefully how you can help yourself. So if you like this video, please give me a subscribe. I do videos about anti-aging, about over 40 skincare and makeup tutorials. And now diet. So <laughs> I post twice a week and I will see you soon. Until then, Keep on glowing and please take care of yourself.